Taz here at Shield Canine, and today we are going to talk about reactive dogs and the three biggest mistakes I see people make with their reactive dogs. Before I move forward, I would like to quickly mention our sponsor, Eric Outdoor USA. They make excellent outdoor apparel, including the rain jacket that you see me wearing in this video. Eric Outdoor USA for all your dog training and hiking needs. They make pants, jackets, vests, and much, much more. Use promo code SHIELD15 and save 15% on your next order. Tell them has sent you. Moving forward, the first big mistake that I see reactive dog owners make is hiding the dog. And I don't mean just the obvious way where they cross the street whenever they see another dog or they lock the dog in a bedroom every time the um, guests come over and so on and so forth. I mean, they try to hide the dog in obedience. And that's, in my opinion, still hiding the dog. They play the focus, look at me game, the sit, the down, whatever magical command they think is gonna get them out of the reactivity. And I don't blame them. It's probably something the local trainer told them to do, right? Ah, your dog doesn't like other dogs. Just make her look at you every time you pass another dog and she'll be okay. But of course, that's not very realistic because other dogs are everywhere. People are everywhere. You know, whatever it is your dog's reactive to, you can't hide from it, so don't hide. The solution to reactivity is to not hide from it. It is to not distract from it. it is to address it. And once you've addressed it, you've opened the door to do all that other fancy stuff, the obedience, so on and so forth. So when we get reactive dogs, the first thing that I always do with the reactive dog is I immediately address the reactivity. I just start on the basic behavior from the dog. I work on loose leash walking, and then, this is very important, I teach the dog that he or she is no longer allowed to cope with the emotion that is causing them to be reactive the way that they have been coping to the, that point. And of course, they're choosing to be reactive when they feel that fear or that excitement. And I'm teaching the dog that that is no longer acceptable. The dog learns very quickly and succinctly. I don't fool around. I don't make things confusing for the dog, play thresholds, all this nonsense. I just very quickly, fairly, and effectively communicate to the dog that you are not allowed to do this anymore. There's no magic, guys. There's only effective communication in a way that makes sense to the dog. I make it good to be good and bad to be bad. And there's just nothing more complicated to it than that. There's a lot of misconceptions out there about how to make it bad to be bad. Correcting a dog is cloaked in so much mythical bullshit you would not even believe. You need to make it really aversive that the dog did a bad thing. And you need to make it in such a way that the dog is very clear, okay? Over time, they will generalize. And that opens the door now to more advanced training. So within a couple days, the dog learns really quickly. Don't do that. Now, let's talk about the second problem. This is a big one. I see a lot of people micromanaging their dogs. They're actually making the problem worse. And then they wonder that why, why the behavior never goes away. You need to change how your dog is processing that emotion. It's just that simple. And you're not gonna change it unless you absolutely communicate to your dog in a way that he or she understands. So when I reward them or correct them, they're never unsure about why something happened. And this brings me to one other thing. If you are going to reward your dog, reward your dog. And if you're going to correct your dog, correct your dog. Don't half-ass correct your dog. That's the worst thing you can do. If you're correcting your dog and he shakes it off like the Terminator taking a bullet, you didn't correct your dog. The dog is telling you he was not corrected. He didn't perceive your little prong collar pop as being aversive. Hey, like I said, it's not about the, just the physical correction. It's about the communication. Dogs are domestic animals. They have evolved over thousands of generations to actually be sensitive to our emotions and to be able to coexist with us. So your ability to communicate your displeasure to him is actually gonna be very powerful. The social pressure you can exert on your dog is not to be underestimated. So don't just rely on a physical correction. Now, let's quickly talk about the third and probably the biggest issue I see with people, socialization. They think they're gonna socialize this problem away. So they're gonna take their dog to meet lots of other dogs and lots of people, and this is how they're gonna fix the reactivity. Guess what, you just make it worse. It doesn't work like that. Your dog has anxiety about the social interaction. So by actually generating more social interactions, regardless of how they end, your dog imprints on the beginning, the solution. This is the deal that I come up with with all these dogs that I train. I will not let anybody hurt you or bother you or interact with you because I know that's what you're worried about. I won't let them do it. But on the flip side, you're not allowed to act like an idiot. 
And that's the deal we come up with. You don't act like an idiot, I don't let people that you don't like or dogs that make you uncomfortable mess with you. And it's just that simple. And you wouldn't believe how quickly they take to that. It's very simple. Immediately the problem goes away. But now I'm gonna give you guys a quick tip, okay? You will see me in my videos a lot with my dogs carrying balls in their mouth. Now these are working line dogs, so they have ball drive. So they're actually able to carry the balls for some distance and it gives him the ability to kind of do something else with his mind. Now, here's the important thing. You cannot introduce play or, you know, uh, toys to the situation until you've done the first things that I've talked about. Once you've made things clear to the dog, you guys have some basic respect with each other. He's really clear on what you want and what you don't want. And you've made big, big inroads into the, the, the problem behavior. You can start to introduce play. And I do this a lot. And then I encourage the dog to play with me in the presence of the thing that they used to react to. And usually that's the finishing touch. It completely helps the dog neutralize him or herself to that specific thing. And you know, once I get the dog able to go and play fetch and run past the target at hand, grab the ball, bring it back to me, so on and so forth. It's a very rewarding for the dog. It really helps them emotionally stabilize. And it's a fantastic tool to have in the toolbox. So it's not just about corrections. It's also about helping the dog emotionally stabilize. Cause like I said, for a lot of these dogs, it's fear. It's a lot of fear. And if you don't give them something other than avoidance, then all you're going to have in the end is a dog that is terrified. So anyways, I hope this helped. Like, subscribe, comment below, like I said earlier. Thank you for watching and see you next time.